Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, speaking to Logan Allen about season three of Sweet Magnolias dropping worldwide on Netflix July 20th. Welcome back to the show, man. It's so good to see you. Dude, it's good to finally be back. I've been waiting. It's great to be back. I mean, I think like this is maybe like your third time on the show. I don't know. I feel like we've done an interview every season of Sweet Magnolia since the beginning. So it's three three yeah, times. Oh, yeah. Probably. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because you're right. We did do one for season two. So it, it's been a minute. Yeah. Maybe we, we did. did like, it, an I'm like regular live. now, maybe, you know? Maybe we did like an Instagram live for the pandemic or something. But I don't know. Like I maybe four maybe. times. I don't know. <laughs> like time is Yeah. So... Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty much the co-host at this point. So. <laughs> You know, it's, it's going to be back. Now it's three seasons of playing the same character in one TV show. And I feel like season one is interesting because you've never played this character before. Season two, you're fighting your footing a little bit and everything. Now it's like three seasons, I feel like, is a good amount to kind of like discover this character and kind of get to know it. Do you feel like you have a grasp for this character now or do you feel like you're still learning about this character? Yeah, I mean, I definitely have a better grasp on him than I did with season one. Uh, you keep learning more and more about him, but you're you, there, there's so much to still explore with him. Uh, yeah. You know, he's still dealing with the stuff in season two with the car crash and everything that went on with that or at the end of season one. And and, you know, it's a lot of these motion emotions that are still building up with them. So um, th there's never, never not new things to learn. Uh, you know, he, he's always growing. He's at that development. He's 15 years old. Right. He's still trying to find himself. So yeah. you as the actor are trying to find yourself in this character as he's trying to find himself. It's, it's kind of weird, but uh, it, it's been really fun to play and, and all the different emotions and, and everything regarding him. So it, there's always new stuff to learn each season. I feel like there's so many themes in a show like Sweet Magnolias, but we said this in season one, since the season one interview. I mean, family is kind of the focal point. It will always be the focal point. Do you read the scripts every season with that in mind a little bit? Because I feel like that's something that can kind of help getting kind of the mood and the tone of the show because it really is like a family first tv show yeah oh 100 it's about family relationships friendships and how important that is in a small community and i think um yeah i i i, I feel like when you read it you have to think of family yeah. you know what i mean like they they throw it at you so much um yeah you, there's no way to really get around it um yeah, there's not really much to say about that. Family's always going to be definitely the, the main vocal point of it. And what are you kind of focused? What are you focusing on when you get like a new script for like a new season of Sweet Magnolias? You obviously want to know what's going on with your character. I mean, I feel like that's like <laughs> that's natural, right? Like, but like, are you focused on like the whole thing, certain characters? Like, what is that mindset for you as an actor storyteller when you get those new scripts? Dude, so they don't tell us any spoilers at all yeah. until we get the actual scripts. Like at the end of season one with the car crash, nobody knew until they finally gave it to us. So and the big cliffhangers. So um, and with season three, of course, there's more cliffhangers and more stuff. So we're, we're just sitting here it's trying a, to come up with our own theories. Season of Sweet Magnolias. We wouldn't exactly. Expect else. <laughs> exactly. It's drama. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, but no, when, when I read it, I, I, since I truly do love the show for what it is, and I'm, I'm glad to be on a show that I actually enjoy. Um, I'm just, I feel like I'm a viewer, like I'm a watcher. You know what I mean? I view Kyle as this separate character, you know what I mean? And I just, I read it through and, and, and we do the table reads with the entire cast and that's the most fun, you know what I mean? Cause you really get to see it then come to life on screen after that. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I just, I just read it for what it is. Like I'm a viewer, like I'm, I'm someone in the audience reading the script and, and, and that's what I love about it is it's a show that I truly do enjoy. So I can kind of have that, that point of view when I'm reading it. Yeah. And I do find it interesting as well, because you look at, a lot of what your character has kind of gone through, but also what your character has like witnessed too. Like there's been some stuff that's happened to Kyle, but there's been a lot of stuff that's happened when Kyle is like, they're just kind of like seeing everything and taking everything in. Right. Which is, Oh yeah. It's like a little bit of both. Right. It's like, there's stuff that's happened to you, but there's like stuff where Kyle's there. It hasn't directly happened to Kyle, but like, he's like, there <laughs> well you know this is a small town you know yeah. they, they call it serenity it's not very serene you know i mean oh something's going down but but since it's such a small town everybody's in everybody's business mm -hmm. and everybody knows everything mm -hmm. so every single character is involved with with every single subplot going on in some way so yeah man it's it, it, it's craziness i mean you're always you're always engaged as a character which is very very fun and you always kind of well 
I don't want to say you always know what's going on, but you know at least a part of what's going on. You're never really fully left out. You know what I mean? You've dealt with it for two seasons, but I feel like the Netflix effect where this thing kind of drops on July 20th across all these different time zones, depending on where you are, you're going to wake up in the morning and there's going to be so many people in different countries that have like binged the whole thing already and you haven't even <laughs> kind of started your day. You've, de you've dealt with that, Logan, for two seasons now, but like... That will still never not get crazy, right? The Netflix effect? Dude, it's so funny that you mentioned waking up and having people watch it because it, <laughs> it happens, dude. I will go to sleep and wake up. The show will be out for like, you know, five, six hours or whatever. <laughs> and people already seen the whole season. And I'm like, what is happening? And it's crazy. But no, it's incredible, too, man. Because you guys worked so hard on it, right? And then someone yeah. like binges it and like, like one sitting you know what I mean? it, 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 right right it, it's wild but you know what though then they go back and rewatch it again a month later and 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 rewatch it multiple times in a row i mean I, I know some people that when season one and season two dropped they binged the entire show in like two weeks straight they watched it and then watched it right again after that so um th that is what's nice and also seeing everybody from all these different countries you know see the show and 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 engage online you know what i mean they don't even always speak the same language but they use the trans the translation thing and and they, they talk back and forth and they throw out theories they talk about characters and just kind of seeing how it brings all these different cultures together is is truly incredible and not every show can do that and the fact that you know it's a show about family and and, and all that I, I think that's really what brings people together and it's it's truly incredible and, you know, staying on, like, the Netflix kind of theme a little bit, because last time we were on the show, we tiptoed around it a little bit. Like, I knew you were in, like, the new season of Stranger Things, but, like, you literally couldn't say anything. It is great that we could actually, like, talk a little bit about it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your character was not a good dude. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. No, not really. That, would, that must have been crazy when it officially dropped, because you had that secret for a long time that you couldn't tell many people oh. and that dropped that must have been like a whole event would actually dropped right dude you don't even know you don't even know <laughs> i did the audition in 2019 oh man. so and then, and we were supposed to film it in 2020 covid hit screwed everything up um and then we what well, we filmed it in 2021 and then it came out in 2022 that's three years of not being able to tell anybody anything that is terrible so like, cause you know, I mean, you, you get a show and then you get the role and be in probably like before you even start filming, you can release like that you're in the show yeah. you know I mean, you'll see a de deadline article article or something like that. Um, <laughs> and th that's what happened with Sweet Magnolias. This show, I couldn't say anything because COVID hit messed everything up. So I'm sitting there with everybody else and we're just like, dude, it's just, it's, it's it so, so tough. It's like arguably like the greatest show on the planet too, right? <laughs> right. Dude, I'm, I'm a huge Stranger Things fan. And then COVID. So you're just sitting at home the entire day going through social media and it's all Stranger Things on my For You page and stuff. And I'm like, bro, this ain't making it any easier, man. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, that was really, really tough. Like I'm very good with not giving out spoilers or anything like that, but, but sitting on, on a role that you can't speak about for three years is very tough how long was the roller rink scene like in terms of shooting it like was that like a couple of days like i'm just curious about that that whole kind of scene with everyone at the roller uh, rink i think we did uh maybe like a week maybe yeah well, i would say around very, a week it was very it was it was it was a big scene and yeah, no, well, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, I think we I think we did a week about that. So we yeah, because I was I think I shot maybe two weeks in total, okay. uh, about like a month apart. So I did the first week was all the stuff at the school. Yeah, uh, when I was bullying them in California at the high school, and then the second week was was everything going on at this the the rink. And what was cool is that was the last thing that they filmed for the entire season. Uh, was the roller rink stuff so they had like the whole rap party thing there everybody was skating and and it felt like you're in the 80s yeah everybody was in like their short I mean, short it was, always, just, it was cool I, you know what i mean man, like one of the things there it's so funny that stranger things has so many kind of moments and lines but one line i'll i'll always remember is like <laughs> when 11 when al screams angela like that is always gonna be the one Maybe it's because what happens afterwards with like literally like the roller skates in the face. <laughs> but yeah. like that's a very memorable like you were you were really in a very memorable kind of scene in Stranger Things too, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was incredible. Yeah, I mean it, there was definitely a, a lot there. Um that that whole scene was very fun to film. Uh mm -hmm. we had the stump people all around. They had to shoot it where it looked like they were hitting him in the face with the the roller skate. I think they had a rubber roller skate as well. 
uh, just in case. And uh, yeah, that, that was really fun. And then they had the makeup that, and then they added CGI, of course, for some of the, the blood going down. But a lot of that was real makeup that they put all, all on Elodie's face, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, no, that whole sequence overall with the, the milkshake and all that, it was, it was, there was a lot going on there. And it, that's the, probably why it took a week. There was a lot, lot there. It wouldn't be a Logan Allen pop turn of interview if we didn't mention horror movies because we're, we're big horror movie guys. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's one of those things. Is it crazy to see a genre like that? Because you've worked in it with Creep Show and everything, but I know you're a big fan of watching them. Is it nuts to see, in your opinion, the amount, but the variety of horror movies? Like there's the psychological thriller, there's like the slasher. There's a lot of them these days. Like take your pick, you know what I mean? That, yeah, no, I'm and and especially last year. Last year was a great year for horror movies, and and we're getting some good ones. I think the second half is starting to finally kind of bring some in. Uh, Talk to me is one. We got Insidious this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so th- th- there's a lot of good things coming out. Um, and and it even actually me and my buddy just made a nine minute horror short film, uh, ourselves. Uh, so we're nice. really excited about that. But but yeah, horror's on the right direction. You know what I mean? There was a little era there where we were kind of doing the most like cliche things well, you know I, and now I, I we're kind of like it's it's crazy you mentioned that with like insidious because i feel like the insidious movies the conjuring movies were part of that kind of movement that real that big boom of like the popularity of the genre like the genre has been around forever dude but it's yeah. just like there was and it's so crazy that it's already like the fifth insidious movie like it's wild like i know this one goes back to like it's almost like Insidious 3 because the last two were kind of their own kind of movies, not part of the Lambert family right. thing. But mm-hmm. no, it's 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 wild to see. Is that like something always on your mind sometimes when you like talk to your managers, your agents? You're like, let's 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 get some horror movies. Like, does that bro? Ever- I want to <laughs> be in a horror movie, dude. I want to be in one so bad. It's not even funny. Yeah, no, I I tell them all the time, you know, and uh, and, and right now is the time for it. Yeah. And and yeah, I, I would love to just be in. I, I like I said, I love the genre so much. I think that's where some of the best camera work, the best score, uh, all of that. I, I think is a, a lighting as well. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the most the, the the best aspects of a lot of the technical stuff in filmmaking is in the horror genre. So I've always wanted to really do one, man. And and it hopefully it happens soon. We'll see. When you kind of work on a show like Sweet Magnolias, and you work on something like Creep Show, or you work on something that's completely different genre wise. Is there a little bit of a mindset change in terms of the practice of acting and going in there and kind of doing it and getting in the zone? Or is it all storytelling and it's kind of kind of similar a little bit in terms of like kind of getting in there and doing your thing? Because I always found that interesting. Because like, especially Sweet yeah. Magnolia is a creep show. You can't have like, th- those are two completely different things. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, no, I, there's definitely an aspect, there's definitely some kind of mindset change, but a lot of those emotions are everyday emotions that you go through. Yep. Uh, you know, there's emotions in Sweet Magnolias that I acted out that are the same emotions that I feel sometimes in the Creep Show episode I did or a Stranger Thing. So, like, it, it's all about really finding those emotions, but you do have to be very aware of what you're creating. And that always, that just goes back to the writing, yep. right? And the dialogue and what happens there. So, um, it, it, that, that truly is just all about writing and, and the actor's job of kind of bringing that to life. But, um, but yeah, no, there's definitely a part of you where you do have to, you know, um, you do have to be aware of the situation you're in, in the environment that you're in. But like I said, good writing, good atmosphere that you, you just you go. It's it's kind of like a it's like this mode you go into. It's really yeah. hard to explain. But, no, no, it's you know, like, no, I, absolutely. It's a zone. And that's why yeah. I feel like, you know, because I'm always a big I'm a big BTS guy, like a behind the scenes guy. Right. Everything. And I, I'm I'm always a big fan of like. What are you and Carson like talking about before going in and doing a scene with the family, right? But it's kind of like I feel like there's situations where like there's probably not much talking. Like there's probably like some like stuff before and everything, a base camp and everything, but like going in and like doing it, I feel like depending on the show, like there's probably not much kind of like pre-game talking, is there? No, so it's it's funny you mentioned base camp. Base camp, we kind of just go in our trailers and we'll hang out with, with some other people sometimes. But really, I'm just in my base, my trailer, just like sleeping yeah. <laughs> half the time. Uh, and then when it comes to actually uh, being on set, yeah, in between scenes when we go back to the holding area, yeah, I mean we're, we're just we just talk about like anything. It, yeah. It's it's kind of weird. It, it's almost like you need to take a step back for your yeah, mental sake, like, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because I feel like I started doing a lot of interviews where I'm like, what are those conversations like? Like when you're waiting to go do a scene, like are you talking about the scene? Are you breaking it down? And like everyone was really like, not really. We're just talking no. about like our dogs. <laughs> yeah, and- no, that, that's it, dude. <laughs> 
that, that's all we're doing. And, and like, sometimes if we have questions, we'll, you know, we'll talk about, or maybe theories, you know what I mean? We'll talk about the script that we just got for episode eight, you know yeah. what I mean? Like things like that, but, but really we're just kind of talking about sports and, and golfing, you know, just some random stuff, dude. A hundred percent. And uh, season three of Sweet Magnolias, Logan, is dropping worldwide on Netflix July 20th. So in uh, in two weeks, it's going to be out. Two there, weeks. Which is crazy. So great catching up with you as always, man. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Yeah, no. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. It's always always a blast. Um, Logan Allen on Instagram. They can check that out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's Logan Allen on it's Instagram. YouTube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. Of course, you can catch Logan Allen as Kyle in season three of Sweet Magnolias dropping worldwide on Netflix July 20th. Until next time, this is Logan MPD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.